I'm Christy. Today I want to talk about factoring in the disadvantages on your loved one. Last week I looked at more of the advantages or pros of opening an ABLE account for your loved one with special needs. You can find a link to that over on the blog. That's at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This originally posted in August of 2022. I'd be remiss if I didn't do my due diligence and discuss the downsides or cons of opening an ABLE account. Since several of the websites I quoted from last week included the cons with their pros, I'll rely on them again this week. Interestingly, the Experian and TurboTax sites listed no disadvantages, so I've not included them this week. The Bagley Law Group lists the following disadvantages. Again, you can find a link over on the website. Quote, Medicaid payback. There is a Medicaid payback from the account on funds remaining in the account on the death of the designated beneficiary. Contribution limit. For 2022, or contributions are limited to $16,000 aggregate from all contribu contributors in any one year. Accounts that size would generate very little income. However, the maximum earned income contribution to an ABLE account by a disabled beneficiary is now $12,880 per year. Prior to age 26, the disability must have occurred prior to the beneficiary attaining age 26. Asset cap. The total assets in the account cannot exceed $100,000. If the assets do exceed this amount, the beneficiary's SSI is suspended, but not terminated. The individual would again be eligible for SSI when the account limit dropped below $100,000. The individual would continue to be eligible for Medicaid until the account exceeded the state limit of 529 plans. Loss of SSI benefits. If the account exceeds $100,000, since the 2022 SSI benefit is $841 and most states have a small state supplement, a loss of the SSI benefit would likely cost more than the value of the income tax exemption. Qualified Disability Expenses The use of the funds is limited to qualified disability expenses. A third-party special needs trust is much more flexible with respect to distributions." End quote. I'm not sure that any of these are new information with the possible exception of the loss of SSI benefits. However, I've mentioned that that is a possibility. This page on their website then goes on to discuss third-party special needs trust briefly. You can read about that at the link above. Special needs answers lists, um, has a list of cons on their website as well. You can find a link over on the blog. Quote, ABLE accounts can only be established by for the benefit of people who developed their disabilities before turning 26 years old. By contrast, if a special needs trust is established with funds from the trust beneficiary, it does not matter when the person developed the disability. Some people with disabilities can be taken advantage of if they have control of their own funds. If a special needs trust is utilized to hold the funds instead, a trustee has a legal obligation to safeguard the funds. Contributions to ABLE accounts are limited to $16,000 per year and can hold up to $100,000 without hurting a Supplemental Security Income or SSI beneficiary's eligibility, whereas there is no limit on contributions to special needs trusts, although gift taxes could apply. However, ABLE account owners who work may contribute an additional $13,590 in 2022 of their gross income into their ABLE account if they do not have an employer-sponsored retirement plan. Uh, without the assistance of a qualified special needs planner, use of an ABLE account could seriously affect government existence. If there are funds remaining in the ABLE account upon the death of the account beneficiary, they must be first used to reimburse the government for Medicaid benefits received by the beneficiary, and then the remaining funds will have to pass through probate often an onerous court process, in order to be transferred to the beneficiary's heirs. If a special needs trust is used, there will be no probate, and in the case of a special needs trust established with funds that don't belong to the beneficiary, there will be no Medicaid payback." End quote. As I read over these two lists, I find I'm not overly concerned about anything on the list. I've already mentioned most of these throughout the series. I appreciate the confirmation that Medicaid payback upon the account holder's death, but I'm not sure that that's a significant enough disadvantage to keep me from opening an account. Also, my research led me to a link that I've got linked over on the blog, saying able now ac account holders that reside in Virginia are no longer subject to Medicaid payback. 
I'd do some more digging if this applies to you or your loved one, but it's nice to know that this could be a possibility. And I should note that Able Now is based in Virginia. I think this is something that I would consider if your loved one receives money on a regular basis. It's an inexpensive way to protect their government benefits while allowing them to have money in their own name. That said, I think you also need to consider the amount of money your loved one will have in their name. If it's likely to exceed the $100,000 limit, this might not be the smartest move. I also appreciate the warning that some individuals with special needs trust too easily and therefore are easily manipulated if they have sole access to the account. I'm not sure if there are ways to allow others access to the account or not. That's one of the questions that I'll be asking. You might also consider implementing a special needs trust. Here's the thing. Special needs trusts require legal assistance to implement and are therefore not cheap. They can offer more protection and have a trustee overseeing any expenditures. And there's no restriction on how the money is used, but they're more complicated. The upside is that you can have both an ABLE account and a special needs trust. So my question for you this week is this. Have you done any research on ABLE accounts? Have you found any other disadvantages to them? I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can leave me a comment below or you can leave me a comment over on the blog. That's at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This originally posted in August of 2022. If you prefer, you can always email me at Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y at havenofhopeforme.com. I'm continuing to wade through all of my research and figure out the best solution for us so that I can continue to say that life is good and there is never a dull moment.